All right, so before we actually get into the procedural modeling of our couch scenario, I wanna cover a couple nodes that we're gonna be using that are super important to our process of doing procedural modeling in general. So the first node that we're gonna look at is the group node, and the second node we're gonna look at is the match size node. So let's look at the group node first. The first thing I'm gonna do is throw down a box. I'm gonna hit the tab key over here in the network view and type in box, hit enter, and let's just dive inside here. And what I'm gonna do is uh, go into selection mode, hit my little mouse cursor here or hit the S key. And you can see I've got my polygon numbers uh, visible right here. You can see we've got uh, polygon number zero. Uh, let's see, and one is somewhere around here. Yeah, there's one, two, and then it goes through four all the way up to five. So that's zero through five for the six sides of our polygon. So if we want to delete the top primitive here, what I can do is put my mouse on here and select it. And you can see that it highlights yellow. And then I'll just hit the delete key. And you can see that it is thrown down this blast node right here. And in the group field, the group type is set to primitives and it's deleting primitive number two, group number two. So that's sort of how Houdini keeps track of what all it is that you're trying to do. But the problem with this comes from when you are trying to make upstream adjustments. So if you're trying to make an adjustment to your box, which is upstream from your blast, this selection was made non-procedurally, so it's going to cause problems. Now, I can change the size of my box just fine right now, but if I had something going on where I wanted to maybe change the division numbers, like the number of uh, polygons and the grid count on each face of this cube, you can see that now that deleted polygon has jumped down here because polygon zero, one, and two now lies in this lower left-hand corner. So this is where groups come in. If we wanted to actually make a smart selection where we're only selecting the top of this polygon, we could use a group to help us do that and make a selection based off of its facing direction instead of its, you know, straight up polygon number. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the box and control click, uh, control middle mouse click on size, center, and axis divisions. It doesn't look like it's letting me do that. I'm just going to set our axis divisions back to two by two by two. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here and throw down a group node. So the tab key, type in group, and wire that in here. Now, in this group node, by default, we've got this base group right here. And we can actually specify a base group similar to what we did before by hitting this picker right here and tapping on that top polygon and then hitting enter. And you can see that it's entered in base group two here. Now, I could call this group the top and we could wire that into our blast like so. And then if I actually delete group two from the group field and select top now from the drop down menu, this drop down menu gets populated with whatever primitive groups it's seeing upstream because our group type is set to primitive. So if we select, you can see we've got that top group that we just created and it's doing basically the same thing. Now we've specified this base group using a mouse selection. Uh, so that is generally non-procedural way of doing things. If we go up here and change the axes divisions again, you can see that the polygon deletes over here and not on the top. So I'm just gonna set that back to two. And we can try using one of the other uh, parameters down here on the group node to make our selection smarter. So I'm gonna disable the base group. I'm just gonna put the display flag on my group so that we can see what our selection is. So I'm clicking away and you can see that nothing is being selected here. I'm going to go down to this section now, keep by normals. I'm going to enable that. And you can see that if I turn on my manipulator here, it's selecting everything in our, on our object. We've got all the faces are being selected right now. And why is that? That's because this direction is being specified. It's selecting all polygons that are facing in the positive D Z direction with a tolerance or spread angle of 180 degrees. So polygons facing in this direction are going to be selected as well as polygons that are within 180 degrees of that direction, which wraps all the way around to this side. So, you know, the top would be the top and sides would be 90 degrees uh, spread angle away from this side. And then this side over here would be 180 degrees away. So if I bring this below 180 degrees, you can see, just bring it down a little bit. And now this side is not being selected anymore. If I continue to bring that down to something below 90, you can see that only this side is being selected now because nothing, uh, th because the spread angle is not set to a tolerance that will allow anything over 90 degrees. So that just excludes every other face in this selection. So what I could do if I just wanted to select the top was change this direction to something like uh, 0, 1, and tab 0. So I'm hitting 0, 
tab one, tab zero to enter in my direction. You can see that it's just selecting that top face. As long as I have a value below 90, it'll just select that top face for us. And then we can pipe that into the blast. And you can see here now, when I go back to my box and change the number of divisions, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be deleting that top away. So that's a pretty cool thing about the uh, group node. All right, so now that we've talked about the group node, I wanna talk about the match size node. The match size node is gonna be super handy for us when we're trying to align objects and size objects and scale them relative to one another. It's really super handy for that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna scoot off to the side over here and let's start on pig head. I'm gonna hit the tab key and type pig. And you can see that we've got the uh, pig head right here. I'm gonna turn off my um, primitive numbers. Then I'm gonna put down a match size. Hit the tab key, type match size, and wire that in like so. And you can see that when I um, toggle the match size on and off, you can see that it's taking that pig head and centering it to this box. That's because by default, it's set to match and do this translation justifying the X, Y, and Z axis of our incoming geometry to our target position and our target size. So the size isn't really happening right now because we're not doing any scaling, but you can see that this target position kind of corresponds to where that pig is being matched to. And this is uh, pretty powerful when you start using it uh, like so. So say for example, you just wanted to Oops, I'm gonna reset my target position by control middle mouse clicking on that. And I accidentally set a channel here. So I'm gonna control shift left mouse click on that to remove that channel. So we've got our pig head here and you can see we're justifying it to the center on all axes. But say I wanted to rest my pig head on the floor. Well, we could actually change this justify Y to minimum. And you can see now our pig head is perfectly is taking the lowest extent of the vertical bounding box and making sure that the pig head rests on the ground like so. And so if I were to go up here and throw down a transform and start rotating the pig head around, you could see that it's always kind of resting on the ground like that. It's almost like rolling along the ground. This is a lot different than if we were just straight up rotating it. You know, just rotating the pig head just sort of rotates around this axis. But this match size is really smart. It's actually taking it and making sure that it always kind of rests on the ground somehow using that target position. Um, I'm going to just disable that transform right now. And we can uh, look at a couple other things that this thing can do. So on this match size node, we've got these different justification options. We can justify uh, minimum, maximum, um, and center, or we can choose not to do anything at all. We can just say none. It just leaves it where it was. And we can do that for all of our axes. I'm just going to put this back to center for right now. Let's look at the scaling options now. So if we hit this scale to fit button, what it's going to do is it's going to shrink the, uh, the pig head down so that it fits perfectly inside of our square. And you can see that it's choosing the best fit axis. We're doing a uniform scaling option. And what it's doing is basically finding the largest axis of the bounding box of this pig and uniformly scaling it down so it fits. You can see that the nose is just touching the front of this box while the back of the neck is just touching the back of this box. If we switch into our front view, you can see that it doesn't actually fully stretch all the way on the sides. And that is because it's doing this uniform scaling. So it's already found its maximum value. Now, if I untick uniform scale, you can see what it's done is it's actually scaled this on all axes to fit inside of this box. And it doesn't look like much. It's kind of probably hard to tell right now, but it did, it does apply a little bit of skewing. So non-uniform scale, uniform scale. You can see it's kind of stretched it out a little bit. So we can actually choose which axes are being scaled uniformly. We can choose to only scale in X. And so you can see that we're not doing any scaling in X. We're not doing any scaling in Y and we're not doing any scaling in Z. So that's kind of putting it back to uh, where it was before, you know? But we can choose to use it in this way to kind of squish it inside of an object if we want to. But what, this is where the real power that comes in is that we can actually pipe in a different geometry's bounding box to use instead of this target position and target size. So let's check this out. Suppose we want to set our pig head on top of a sphere. I'm just gonna throw it on a sphere. Hit tab key, right? throw it on sphere, and I'm gonna wire that in over here. And so now what I can say is, let's justify the Y minimum 
to the bounds of this sphere. So I'm just going to let's untick scale to fit. And I'm going to justify the Y minimum to the maximum of our sphere. And now you can see that our pig head is going to want to sit on top of our sphere. Wherever our sphere goes, our pig head goes. So we're almost doing like a kind of a parenting relationship like that. But if I change the size of the sphere, I'm going to grab the radius and increase it. You can see that it's also just causing that pig head to be pushed up and along it. And if I really wanted to do something like, say, squash that pig head inside the roughly bounding box of that sphere, we could go back here to the match size and say scale to fit and untick uniform scale and justify the Y to the center of the center. And you can see that it's roughly kind of squeezing that pig head into that sphere. So this is all kind of abstract right now, but you'll see when we get into this couch example how important this concept is.